Hey everyone, how's it going? I hope you're all doing great and following the three H's of the channel and all that good stuff. And this video is a viewer's suggestion of doing encounters that happen on reservations in Canada and the United States. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, definitely pull up a stump with me and let's jump into it. Thank you for watching. I was out camping with a friend in the Arizona woods. At some point, we began to hear noises of what seemed like sheet metal wobbling or electronic noises and such. Not stuff you'd expect to hear while 20 miles out in the Arizona wilderness. We began to see three red lights getting brighter in the sky. My friend goes to sleep and I stay up. He's not really worried about it. The fire is pretty much dead, and I am sat alone in the darkness. I stay real quiet, and then I hear a shrill whistle coming from a ways behind me, and then I see two blue eyes illuminated along the tree line. I become very uneasy and just keep staring at the eyes. All the while, this whistle becomes louder. I sit for what I think to be about 10 minutes, and then the sun begins to rise. Now this shouldn't be possible, because my friend had only went to sleep at 11pm, and then I heard the noises and saw the eyes. But what I thought was 10 minutes was actually the entire night. I have no recollection of anything besides sitting there, seeing the blue eyes, and then the sun coming up. I have no idea what happened. This was on a Native American reservation in Arizona, so maybe I should ask around there for some answers. Arizona in general is kind of weird and finicky like this. There was even stuff going on in the neighborhood that I used to live in, about 30 minutes from the same res where this happened. We'd constantly hear weird noises in the middle of the night, and the same shrill whistling that sometimes we'd see lights in the sky, but nothing quite like what happened that night. So I live out on the desert in northern Arizona. Occasionally, I found myself driving through the Navajo Reservation, known by those who live there as the Res. Now I know what you're thinking, an empty desert must be peaceful to drive through. Sure, in the daytime, yes. But at night, once the sun goes down and there's no light, cell phones mostly don't work and it's just hours of driving through empty open desert dotted by the random busted up house. Since there's no light at all, all you see is what your headlights reflect off of. And no matter how bright your lights are, they never see him bright enough. I was coming back from Telluride late one night because I stupidly thought that it was a good idea to agree to have a late dinner with a friend. Everything is normal. There's one or two cars every five to ten minutes or so. Random gusts of red dirt blast my car from time to time. I was listening to an old Radiohead album to keep me awake. As I'm staring out into the darkness, keeping the car between the two white lines, I see something up ahead. It's on the shoulder of the road. It appeared to be human shape, but that made no sense because this stretch of road was desolate. Like, not even a sheep farmer lived out here. Nor should anyone just be out walking this road for any reason at night. As I got closer, I can see what looks like a white dress, but where's the face? Why don't I see a face? My heart starts beating quickly, and I'm not sure whether to slow down, stop the car right there, turn around, or floor it. I get closer, and I see that whatever it is, its hair is covering its face. It's long, black, stringy, straight hair. The ring is pretty close to how she looked, if you've ever seen that movie. 
The weird part is, it just stood there, seemingly staring at me as I got closer. The amount of shivers I had at this point almost kept me from breathing. I thought, F this so much, I don't want anything to do with this. I hit the gas and prayed that my car wouldn't break down. I felt relieved, yet completely disturbed all at the same time. Not even a few minutes later, I get this bad feeling. I look over, and next to my window is the person running next to my car. I look down at the speedometer because I don't understand how this is happening. My speedometer reads 70 miles per hour. I look over again, and it's still there, running in the middle of the night, in the middle of the desert. I start screaming like a disturbed man, getting cold water poured on them. I floor the gas pedal. It took at least 10 minutes for me to even want to consider looking over to my side. When I finally did, all I saw was darkness now. It didn't make me feel any better. I just kept driving. It later recurred to me that the reason it was covering its face with hair is so that its eyes would not reflect off my headlights. Whatever this thing was, definitely had that predatory animal eye glint at night once light is shone into it. I've never driven on the res at night since then. This took place back home on my reservation. I'm Algonquin First Nations from Canada. On the res, traditional beliefs and legends of the paranormal are still a big part of our community. The paranormal is a regular part of life. We believe in a spirit world, and we believe that sometimes these, quote, beings can come across over to our world and maybe even live amongst us. Anyways, here's the story. It was the fall of 2011. I was 16 years old and living in a city near the reservation with my mom. Every weekend, we'd go back home to the res to see my dad and my little brother. On Friday, during the drive back home, I get a text from a friend of mine. There was a party that night, and she wanted to know when I'd be home so she could come pick me up. I gave her a time, and she told me that she'd swing by. My mom and I get home, and as soon as we stepped inside the house, we see my dad and my cousin sitting at the kitchen table drinking some beers. They're both cops on the res, and beers on a Friday evening means that they've had a particularly tough week at work. Typically, the toughest cases to deal with are child abuse and other darker things, so a part of me feels sad upon seeing them. They both look very tired and drained, but they're happy to see us. We say our greetings, we catch up a little, and my dad asks me if I have any plans. I mention the party and tell him where it'll be. He and my cousin share a weird look. He says, I don't know, should we tell her? While looking at my dad, he laughed, and then they decided that I should probably know what's been going on since I'd be going to a house pretty deep in the woods later that evening. They start with the first strange call that they got on Monday night. An older woman called saying that there were people outside of her house knocking on all of her windows. But she said that she couldn't see anybody, but there must have been at least three people judging by all the different locations of the knocking. They arrive at the woman's home. They inspect all around the house and even check the woods, but nothing comes up. They tell her that it's probably just some teenagers playing tricks on her and that there really isn't much else they can do besides patrol around the area in case they come back. On Wednesday night, the same woman calls again with the same problem. She said people were knocking on all her windows again. It had rained that day and there was mud all around this woman's home. So they figured, at the very least, they'd find footprints. But they couldn't find a thing. 
This is when I started feeling like something was very off. Because there were huge patches of mud everywhere. They thought maybe that the woman was just lying for attention. But they told her the same thing they told her a few nights prior. By Thursday night though, everyone on the res was talking. It turns out that this woman wasn't the only one experiencing the knocking. She was just the only one to call the police. People were linking it to supernatural causes, but my dad was still sure that it was just a group of teens pranking people. But then they got another call from the same woman for again the same reason. They rushed over there and were met with the same situation, except this time the woman's neighbor walked over looking pale as a ghost. He said, is this about the knocking? He was looking very shaky. They say, yeah, did you see something? He nodded and said, you guys are going to think that I'm crazy. He goes on to explain that he just stepped outside for a cigarette on his front porch when he heard the knocking. He looked around and saw something by the old woman's house. There was a black figure standing outside her window looking into her home. He said it looked like a person, but completely made out of shadow, and he could tell it was solid, but there were no features on it. He stared at it, completely in shock, and watched as the thing knocked a couple of times, and then darted around the house, knocking on every single window. He said it moved much too fast to be human. It was practically a blur. It went around the house a few times. Then, it ran across the road into the tree line, behind one tree in particular, as though it were hiding. The man was frozen, but he couldn't look away. The black shadow then leaned out from behind a tree and now stared directly at him with yellow eyes that reflected light like a cat's. And then it smiled, showing many small pointed teeth. The guy said, I almost shit my pants. He tried to joke, but his voice was very much still in shock. My dad didn't know what to make of this, but after checking the old woman and finding her okay, although shaken, he told them that he'd keep an eye on things and just to put it out of their minds, try not to think about it. So fast forward once again to Friday. By this point, everyone's got their own story. In addition to numerous people experiencing the knocking, there were also quite a few more sightings, and everyone described the thing exactly the same way to my dad. One woman was taking her trash bin out to the road when she thought she saw someone in her peripheral vision standing near the trees. As she walked back up the driveway to her home, she felt like that she was being watched. Right before she was about to open the door to go back inside her home, she looked back and saw the two reflective yellow eyes watching her from the trees. She said that they were about five feet off the ground. Another couple was driving at night and they saw a humanoid figure standing in the middle of the road. As they got closer, they slowed down, and it turned around to face them. They saw the figure had the same reflective yellow eyes and the sharp, pointed teeth as it smiled at them. They stopped the car, too afraid to get any closer to it, until they decided they should just speed past it. It was a narrow road, and the figure was only a few feet away as they drove by it. They said that it maintained eye contact the whole time. Then my dad asked me, after telling me all this, you sure you still want to go to that party? But, ironically, my friends were already pulling into the driveway just as he had finished. So I gave my family hugs and kisses and said goodbye. They told me to be careful but I wasn't too concerned though. A common belief among native people is that negative energy attracts negative energy. 
So an evil spirit will be drawn to people with unresolved issues or traumas. But if you're someone who is spiritual, self-aware, and basically a good person, that in and of itself is protection. So I get to the party, and within 20 minutes, the conversation shifts toward all the paranormal experiences that people have been having. I'm really curious about what everyone has to say, because they have stories that I haven't heard yet. But my friend couldn't hold her alcohol very well. We were 16 after all, and she was crying, and I was trying to make her feel better while listening to everyone's stories. One of the people at the party was related to the smoking man that my father first talked to, the one who first described the shadow thing that darted into the trees. This person told us that the experience shook the smoky man up so much that he had smudged his entire home. Smudging is something our people do when we're looking for extra protection against paranormal entities. The man also went to visit multiple elders around the community asking for advice or if they knew what the hell was going on. It's commonly said on the res that paranormal experiences don't happen as often as they used to. If you talk to the elders, they have endless stories and even more advice about how to protect yourself compared to younger generations. Anyway, the man had gone to visit some elders, and one of them had explained that the shadow thing that everybody was seeing was evidence that somebody had done an unauthorized shaking tent ceremony. If you don't know what that is, you can look up more details, but it's basically, and I'm going to generalize here, sort of like a Ouija board session, but it takes place inside of a tent. People stand around the tent while the shaman goes inside and asks questions. The tent begins to shake and you can hear the voices of spirits coming through. I've never personally been to a shaking tent ceremony because we haven't had a good enough reason to make one. Typically, our ancestors used them when they were starving and in the dead of winter and needed to know where the nearest food source was. My mom's been to one and her stories are crazy. She described multiple voices, men and women, all speaking the native tongue. She said they were very upset that the people were doing a shaking tent ceremony since they weren't yet on the verge of death. The people tried to explain that they were only doing the ceremony to prove that it was real. This was at a time when our people felt like that we were losing our culture as a result of the residential schools. But the explanations didn't help. The spirits were angry about this, saying that the bridge between the two worlds should never be opened unless absolutely necessary because you don't know who you're communicating with. It could be good spirits, but it could be evil ones. It might be ancestors but you just never know. Anyways, back to the smoking man. The elders told him that the shadow thing with yellow eyes that everyone was hearing and seeing was a spirit. It crossed over into our world because of a shaking tent ceremony. Someone on the reserve had been doing them without the consultation of the elders. At this point, two of the drunkest dudes at the party started saying, disrespectful things about this shadow entity trying to act macho. Most of us were looking at each other like, why would you disrespect an evil spirit? That's exactly how you attract it to you. That's when I went back to the sunroom to console my drunk, crying friend. But while I was with her, I noticed that the rocking chair outside on the porch was rocking back and forth by itself. I looked away immediately, refusing to make direct eye contact, but I could see it moving in my peripheral vision. We were raised in our culture to ignore certain events. Spirits feed on the energy that people put toward them, so if you freak out, get angry, yell at it, start crying, or 
anything like that. It'll stick around. That's what it wants. It thrives on energy of any kind. Five minutes or so go by, and I'm still seeing the rocking chair move out of the corner of my eye. Suddenly, I hear a commotion. One of the other girls claims to have seen the spirit. Later, we named it Kokogi, an Algonquin word for monster. She says she was listening to the boys talk about the spirit when she saw one of the boys staring very strangely out onto the balcony behind her. She turned around to see what he was looking at, and through the window was the shadow spirit sitting on the rocking chair, literally three feet away from her, smiling. The boy who had been staring out there sprinted toward the balcony doors, slammed them open, and charged at the spirit. I went outside to check on this boy and found him staring into the woods. He turned back to look at me and said, get everyone inside. The tone of his voice made me automatically obey. He got back inside and told everyone to clean up the place so that we could leave, and we spent a while just cleaning. Then we began to hear the knocking coming from all around the house. After a while, we were finally prepared to leave. People ran out, piled into their cars, and began to take off. Me and the boy were walking towards his truck. He was my drive home. When suddenly, he began to rush me and push me into the truck. Then he jumped in and peeled out of there. I asked them why he did that, but he refused to talk about it. A few days later, I ended up hanging out with him again, and he told me his experience of that night. While the other boys were disrespecting the spirit, he saw it appear out of thin air on the rocking chair out on the balcony. He made eye contact with it and suddenly couldn't look away. He and the spirit were staring each other down, and that's when one of the girls saw his expression. She turned around saw the spirit, and screamed. He said his first instinct was to defend his friends, and that's why he ran outside and charged at it. He said the feeling that he was getting from the Kokogi was almost like it was daring him to do something, but the second he got up, the thing stood up and ran into the woods, disappearing from the patio in a blur. When the boy went outside, he stood on the lawn and saw it standing at the tree line, looking right at him with a smile on its face. Later, as we walked back to the truck, he saw it again, closer, and that's why he had pushed me into his truck to leave. After he dropped us off at our houses, he and his friend realized that they never locked the door to the cottage, so they went back. But his friend was too scared to go in, even though it was his cottage. So the boy went in by himself. The second he opened the door, the thing was standing in the living room. The boy locked the door as fast as he could and hopped back in the truck. The two then peeled out of the driveway. Sightings continued for a few days after that. It was the talk of the res. But then, suddenly... Everything just stopped. No more knocking. No more sightings. Everyone was curious about what happened to the spirit. What was it? And could it come back? Would it come back? Eventually, word came from up north where sightings of the same spirit were seen in a different community. And then, white people in the town just north of us were reporting very similar strange sightings, and other reservations near us were as well. The way the stories were coming in, it's like the spirit was traveling north. Anyways, as of 2018, there's been no other sightings. No one on my res or anybody has seen anything remotely similar of this particular thing. So, what'd you think of those? 
If you have any suggestions for other videos, like places or topics or something like that, feel free to comment them below, and I'll try to look at them all. And I hope you will enjoy the video, and if you did and would like to support the channel, there is a PayPal and a Patreon down in the description below, as well as an email that I'm still working on getting a new one, I just have to remember to do it someday, uh, that you can send your story to if you'd like to. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope that you'll like and subscribe or share the video and all that good stuff, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for pulling up a stump, thank you for watching.